Hello everybody, it's Pineapple here, back with another video. Now, so today we are talking about the lab list that I played last night at Locals, and I went 6-0 with it, winning the whole tournament. Uh, felt really good. Uh, the big thing that you all are here for is me discussing, you know, post uh, Dune with the Unchained links. So let's just hop right into the card by card. We'll recap what happened at Locals, but uh, main deck stuff. First up, two copies of Lady, of course. Uh, we don't want to draw multiples of this card, but it is fantastic and it does everything for the deck. Um, and subsequently, you know, you don't want to brick on it, but you do want to see it in your opener reasonably consistently. Not bad to draw, but again, we don't want to be bricking on it, so two copies is pretty standard at this point. Um, one copy of Lovely, because she is a brick, uh, but she does do pretty much everything in terms of, like, resetting our grind, uh, enabling all sorts of heinous things with Big Welcome, the Field Spell, etc., etc. Just a really, really strong card, but it is a brick, so you have to play it at one. Uh, three copies of our normal summon, Ariana. Uh, just searches everything, you know, advantage generating machine, put it back in your hand with big welcome, draw, is, she does, you know, everything you could ever ask for in a normal summon for this deck, because she is a Rhoda, um, just fantastic, fantastic card, uh, I'm always going to play her at three, I don't think there's any reason to play her at less, uh, for furniture, we're on, of course, three Stovey and three Chandra, as is standard at this point, if you're playing Fern Lab, you know, you always want to see them, uh, they're your advantage generating machines, they do play into the Bist deals, unfortunately, but other than that, they are my perfect little guys. Um, I love Stovey so much because he makes Chaos Angel. Uh, you all know that already. One copy of Clock. Uh, you don't really want to see this in your opener. You want to be searching it because it is kind of dead if you don't have other furniture online. Uh, just really strong, but again, we want to be having other furniture to make him a recursive body, make him just really useful. He's really useful for uh, recurring himself, and then you can link him away for the Unchained links. Uh, just really, really strong card uh, now that his, uh, you have links to go into that aren't just Markbreaker. Uh, we're on one copy of Danger Bigfoot. I was just testing Bigfoot. Uh, this was Farfa at one point, but then I realized I didn't really like Farfa. It was too many bricks. Uh, but the idea is you pitch him for the furniture, and then he pops something. So he turns your furniture into pops turn zero, which is just really, really strong. Uh, I do like the Danger Bigfoot deck. It's very funny. Uh, we're on one copy of Panker Tops in the main. Uh, we can go second. Uh, this deck is, you know, able to go second very consistently with things like Bigfoot uh, and, like, an Ulti Slayer in the main, especially when you combo it with Prosperity. Uh, but, you know, Pank is just so strong going second that, you know, it's... It's Panker Tops. Uh, additionally, you can pitch for furniture since it's one of, you know, if you really have to and you're going first. Um, one copy of the Field Spell. We don't want to draw this. We really, really, really want to be searching it, although it's not the worst thing in the world to, you know, draw it. But again, you want to be searching it because you would much rather have a normal trap. Uh, it's kind of a win more card, but it also really matters now that you have the Unchained Links to bring back off of it. Uh, it gets a lot stronger, you know, when you're bringing back fiends that aren't the lab cards. Uh, we then have three copies of Prosperity. As always, I really don't like to be banishing my stuff that I want to utilize. Uh, and I always like to be taking, you know, the card that I want off my Excavates. Uh, I never want to be banishing cards that I want to see. Just just really strong. I don't ever want to lose to, you know, banish my Goddess and I have to beat a Psychic and Punisher. Um, just, I love Prosperity too much to get rid of that. We're on a copy of Called by the Grave. Beat Ash Blossom, beat Bell, beat Graveyard Effects. It's called by, I, I don't think I have to explain why this is in here. I really hope I don't, at least. Uh, a copy of Ulti Slayer. I love this card. You guys know that I build Lab around Ulti Slayer in the extra specifically because I love this card so much. Uh, it does so much. It rips boards apart like it's nobody's business. It's a nod once per turn. It generates advantage like it's nobody's business. And additionally, the fact that we can search off Pros makes it very, very strong. Uh, we have two copies of Welcome. Uh, I like two copies of Welcome. You really want to be, you know, using it to generate more advantage, like turn three. So you want to like pitch it off furniture, you know, recur it with big, have follow up. You don't really want to be opening it, but you do want to have an extra copy just so that you have more furniture sets. Really strong card, just not, you know, particularly great when the big, the big Welcome exists. The, ba the big bad big Welcome is just so good. Uh, I love this card so much. It is insanely strong. Uh, it bounces everything in Grave. It, you know, triggers Lovely on Summon, searches Clock. It, it does everything you could ever ask for in a card for an archetype. Just so, so powerful. Arguably the strongest card in the deck. Uh, and then for Normal Traps, Ice Dragons. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of Unchained just because of the new support. I don't anticipate this being a continued card that I play, but just removing stuff from Grave, uh, getting to, you know, Banish on Field. Uh, I see a lot of Tear at my locals, so that's partially why this is in here, because it beats Tear into the Sun. It interacts with Branded, you know, reasonably well. Just just a strong card uh, that non-targeting Banish is just very, very good. Uh, a copy of Terrors of the Overroot. This is for Kashtira specifically, because, you know, Kashtira is an annoying deck. Uh, and I want to beat Kashtira. Uh, this dumps just them into the ground. It removes back row. Fantastic card. Uh, a copy of Daruma. It's Daruma. Uh, beat Kashtira. Beat all these other really, really strong, you know, decks. Uh, it interacts in very interesting ways. And subsequently, you know, it's kind of mandatory. It's arguably the best, you know, normal trap in the game. Uh, because it outs towers, monsters, and the like. Uh, we have a copy of Ghastly Glitch. Uh, this is a spicy thing. Uh, 
it's really, really strong. I like Ghastly Glitch right now. I, if you've noticed, I haven't mentioned Punishment. That's because we trimmed Punishment for Glitch. Uh, it is a conditional normal trap, but the fact that its condition is have a fiend means that if it's not online, you are probably losing anyways. So if you can't activate it, you're in a bad spot already. So the condition is kind of, you know, non-existent. And bidding furniture, getting furniture into rotation is really strong. Uh, no one's going to be ashing this because, you know, why would they ash this over a welcome? Uh, just a really, really strong removal trap because you can use it to get rid of, like, back row, get rid of a birth, get rid of a planet. Just really, really, really strong. And then you get to, you know, bin Stovey. Uh, just super strong to get uh, furniture into rotation. Uh, if you really want to, you can send the Unchained guy. Uh, just, just a really, really good card, I think, now that you have actual targets. You can play Farfa. Uh, I don't think that you should play Farfa because then you're playing a whole lot of bricks. Uh, of course, we're on Eradicator. Beat Kashtira into the sun. Uh, beat Striker into the sun. Beat, you know, the mirror, I guess, sort of, kind of. Um, it, it's Eradicator. I don't think I have to explain. Two cups of Strike. Uh, I didn't want to play three Strike because I didn't want to brick on it. I had found so many times I would draw two Strike. And two Strike isn't bad. Uh, you know, it, it is a really strong card. Uh, striking the summon of stuff, this feels really, really strong and really, really good. But, you know, when you draw two copies and no engine, it's it's not a normal trap, so you can't chain Lady to it. Just it, it doesn't feel great sometimes, but it does beat Ash Blossom and Bell, which is, you know, it feels good. Um, and then, you know, for some hand traps, triple imperm, it gets bonus benefit because it turns Lady on in hand. Uh, you can chain Lady to it. Just just it's imperm. I don't think I'd explain why. Uh, we're also on three copies of Ash. Uh, just the best, you know, generic hand trap. It helps with beating Branded into the sun because, you know, Branded's like a really, really bad matchup for Lab just because of how you interact with their fusions. Um, and then, of course, the Unchained Package, an Escape, and a Shivara. If you're unfamiliar with Shivara, it reads as follows. During the main phase, if it's in your hand, quick effect, you can target a Fiend or a face-down card. You can control, destroy it, and if you do, special summon this card, and then you're, like, Fiend blocked while it's face up on the field. And Escape says target an Unchained and a card your opponent controls. Pop both. Uh, escape is really, really good because you can pop your links, and then, you know, get a whole, whole lot of recursion. Just really good cards. Um, so, in the extra, of course, we are playing the boy. It is Chaos Angel. He is my man. The myth, the legend. Uh, he came up once or twice uh, during this tournament, but uh, he wasn't he wasn't super common. I was much more making uh, Yama, but I, I do love Chaos Angel. This card's really really strong. If you are playing for Lab, I highly recommend you pick up a copy of this. Uh, it's a sixty dollar card, but you know you're gonna get your money's worth. It's it's Chaos Angel. Um, a copy of Goddess. It's Underworld Goddess. This is my favorite card of all time. Uh, it says beat Psychic End Punisher. You know, you don't have to get to Daruma. If they interrupt you, you know, you can, you can reach Goddess. Uh, it's it's Underworld Goddess. She's the GOAT. Uh, and she's going to, you know, out every card that, you know, you don't have an immediate, you know, just response to. She is the out. Um, additionally, of course, we are playing a copy of Muckraker. I go back and forth on how many Muckraker you should play. I'm starting to lean into two. I've seen it come up, uh, especially with Unicorn Rip My Muck. Uh, I, I've really considered playing two. I love Muck. Uh, just super great recursion, especially when you can bring back the Unchained Link. So now I'm really considering, you know, playing two. Uh, but, you know, for this event, we played one. Uh, we are, of course, playing the Unchained Package. We have Abomination, Anguish, Rage, and Yama. I'm strongly considering playing an Axis Code for Anguish, you know, just to climb into Axis Code, close out games really fast. But Abomination was really great. He came up once. Uh, I actually was playing against at pure Unchained in that matchup. But uh, if you're unfamiliar, uh, Rage is a quick effect link away of your opponent's special summoned monster, and Anguish links away one of your opponent's monsters on the, your turn, so you can climb into Abomination very quickly and just get a whole bunch of pops. But uh, most importantly is Yama. Uh, this card is unbelievable. It requires two fiends to make, uh, and reads as follows. On Link Summon, it adds a Unchained from, hand or, from deck or grave to hand, which is unbelievable. And then while it's in the graveyard, you know, if a fiend card you control is destroyed, you can banish from the grave and then special summon a fiend non-targeting, so it recurs, you know, lovely lady, your unchained links, just fantastic. Uh, all of the unchained links, except Abomination, also float into adding back a fiend from deck to hand, which, or not from deck to hand, sorry, forgive me, from grave to hand, which is really strong, just super powerful effect. Um, so, you know, you're going to recur, like, your Arianas and stuff, uh, just super good. Uh, I'm on Bucephalus and Garura. This was mostly just like when I was playing Punishment, but you know, Ulti Slayer send Bucephalus for a link, you know, send Garura draw a card is always great. Uh, I think I'm going to cut these probably for another Muck uh, and then maybe, you know, another Yama or something like, like, I'm not sold on these right now because, you know, you're not on Punishment right at the moment. Uh, gl Glitch has replaced it in my eyes. I don't think see myself going back anytime soon. I want to go into my extra, um, but they're, they're still in here. Uh, they didn't come up, so I, I guess they're kind of irrelevant. We're on a copy of Entis as a punishment target. Uh, not a punishment, forgive me. Ulti Slayer. Trouble Sunny is an Ulti Slayer. Malong and Mirror Logic as a Ulti Slayer target. Uh, Mirror Logic actually came up in this tournament because I had to shuffle away a Redoer against Tier Element and then I negated his Scream, which was very, very funny. Um, but 
It, they come up when you know you need them to come up. Uh, they're, of course, ulti slayer targets. Uh, especially when you don't have to play for punishment targets, you don't have to play like two copies of Entis. Uh, it feels much better to just have four spots. Uh, most of the times, like game one, you're just going to banish them for, you know, prosperity, but they are really, really strong cards. Uh, Malong specifically, when, you know, you're bouncing away at Baron and then, you know, bouncing another card is really good. Trouble Sunny is great because you're non-targeting sending. Uh, and Entis is Entis. Uh, Mirror Logic is obviously the weakest of them. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Phoenix and Ling Rebo. I think I'm going to cut Ling. Uh, I think I like the idea of playing, you know, more Muckraker. Um, and Phoenix just beats Decree. Uh, if people are playing Decree, you know, it says beat Decree. Uh, Normal Ariana make Phoenix uh, Special Lady, you know, beats Decree. Uh, that's why Phoenix is here. Uh, Ling Rebo is just here to beat Iboli, but with Muckraker being as generic as it is, I think you can, you know, play uh, just Muck and get away with that. Um, and then on the side, uh, one copy of Div Incarnate and one copy of Lava Golem. I couldn't decide which one I wanted to play. I got one copy of Div Incarnate at a previous Locals, and I just wanted to play here, so, you know, we're playing one Golem, one Div Incarnate. This can be either or, if you have the money for Div Incarnate, you know, I think Div Incarnate is probably better, because it beats Kashtira a lot stronger, but Lava Golem is always a strong budget option, or whatever Kaijus you really want to play. It's just, you know, I happen to have a Div Incarnate, so I want to play one copy of Div Incarnate. Uh, we're on a Bistial package here to Magnum Adrus. Uh, it beats Branded, it beats Tier Element. Um... It also helps you really uh, in the mirror because, you know, you can sink away them to make Chaos Angel with uh, Ariana. Just super good cards. Um, and then, of course, one copy of Evil Twin, Kizakel, and Lila. This is our target for, you know, Trouble Sunny uh, because we need a target for Trouble Sunny to send to the graveyard in order to, you know, send a card. Um, you know, you got to play them. It's that simple. Um, just, it's a brick. I did draw it. It sucked. But, you know, we live and learn. Uh, two copies of Ulti Slayer. You know, the complete playset. Uh, you... I love Ulti Slayer. You probably have figured that out if you've watched my channel ever. Uh, but yeah, I, I love Ulti Slayer. I can't recommend this card enough, but only if you can afford Prosperity. Um, and then two copies of Cosmic. Uh, Cosmic came up a lot. Uh, it was really nice, especially because I played against Gold Pride and uh, Better Luck next time. Not Better Luck next time. Uh, exactly. Start Your Engines is a really annoying trap card for Lab, I have figured out. It just works in really weird, unintuitive ways, like clearing your lovely and then like getting a summon rollerballer from deck just works in really strange ways uh and cosmic is really helpful for clearing that um it, it's a strange strange you know time to you know play because you really don't want them to get to rollerballer because it can beat lady just strange so uh, i've really enjoyed cosmic lately uh dimensional barrier it's d barrier uh we need to be branded we need to be tier element uh this is the best way to interact with those decks uh sword soul as well uh you know it's dimensional barrier it's going to beat dumb rogue decks into the ground uh it did come up for me against your element uh it was really great um so we're on a copy of deck dev in the side as well it is deck devastator virus uh it beats sprite really hard uh the thing that really beat for me in this tournament specifically is it beat unchained into the sun uh, i would not have beaten unchained if i didn't hard draw this card but uh, i did fortunately and so i won game three and what was probably the best set i have played in a hot minute um and then, last up, three copies of Anti-Spell. Uh, I trims Judgment for Anti-Spell on the side, just because I think that you really want to be beating the Sweepers, and you don't want to have to commit to uh, Eradicator Epidemic Virus. And Anti-Spell beats everything that isn't evenly, and if they do go for evenly, you can go for EEV Call Trap. Uh, and that's a lot safer than, you know, just getting having to blind call spell and get, you know, dusted out of your mind. Um, so I, I really like Anti-Spell. I think it's really, really good uh, in this format, specifically with how much... Uh, people are playing spells uh so for a re quick recap of what i played against uh round one i sat down against gold pride uh not gold pride punk specifically i played against pure gold pride that was a very very enjoyable set uh, i won that 2-0 i lost the die roll uh it was just a matter of i he was playing he was playing a tour guide package to get to uh captain carry i impermed the tour guide and then he proceeded to you know set to pass and i had furniture in the end phase so it was a pretty quick uh diddly uh get rid of them all and then game two, I just, I just ulti slayed him for his life. Um, it was a very, very strange set. And then I strike the summon of a psych again. So very, very quick set. Uh, round two, what did I play? Oh boy. Um, oh, I, I'm trying to remember here. Forgive me. Um, but it was, I believe, I want to say I played against Scareclaw. That was a fun set. It was like Scareclaw Kashtira. Um, and I just, I just hit him with Terrors of the Overroot, and that was, that was that, because Terrors just eats Kashtira for breakfast, I Terrors set his normal summon, and then he was just, he was just out of luck, uh, there was no scare clause for him to summon, uh, and subsequently I just, you know, I won, I won from that position, uh, and that basically just repeated itself as, you know, I impermed his, I ashed his field spell to search, and he just, he just passed, because Kashtira is very vulnerable if they can't find a monster, um, 
And that was that was that. Uh, round three, uh, I played. What did I play? Against? Oh, it was Tier Element, and I lost the die roll. And I happened to just like he made Wind Up plus um, Redoer, and I special lady in his end phase instead of big welcome and then i just multi slayed away the redoer and negated scream and then i walked over the window and you know in battle went for lovely and cleared his birth and stuff uh it was a very strange set and then i deep set d barrier and stuff um game two and games two just very very miserable set uh i i just you know i resolved dimensional barrier and then i you know i ulti slayed him away uh just super strong card i have an ulti slayer pank game two and then round four four uh i was playing against chimera at scareclaw there's a lot of scareclaw at my locals forgive me it's a very popular deck at the local level for some reason um and that was a very miserable set because he just he opened mirror knight and went for like the level five and i just impermed it so he passed and then i just impermed the second one that he got to because he ripped mirror knight off the top and i just impermed the second one and that was game one and then game two i just I forget even, I think I won the die roll that game and I actually went first in game one. I just, you know, I, I popped his normal and he just didn't have an out to that. Uh, Cause Scareclaw loses if you pop their normal and they haven't hard drawn a rival. Um, fun fact. Um, but it was just a miserable set. Uh, and then round five, I played probably one of the most enjoyable sets I've ever played. I played the Unchained matchup. Uh, and that was a really interesting matchup because, you know, all of my deck is spot removal and all of his deck is floaters. So it was, it was a very interesting built matchup. Um, I deck dabbed him game three for like three cards. Uh, just ridiculous. Uh, game two though, he blind cosmic me in my end phase and sniped my strike. I could have kept playing if he just, he just didn't, you know, snipe exactly, uh, cosmic, but you know, he happened to snipe it. So it is what it is. Um, but you know, just a really good set from that matchup all along because, you know, he floats, I pop. Very weird. I had to, at one point, I had to use my Abomination that I had gone into uh, to pop his pop his uh, set chamber to stop him from recurring, but Deck Dev won me that matchup. Um, but in conclusion, I really like this Unchained package. I think it's really, really strong. I think that uh, Yama is such a good card just to play because you can send it off of Ulti Slayer or Punishment and then it recurs everything in Grave. Just even if you're not playing, like, want to play the links you, i think you should or the main deck monsters i think you should strongly consider at least putting a yama in as like a punishment target or an ulti slayer target just super good um that said that's all i got for you guys today uh, i'm gonna try to go to another locals and i will see if that goes as well as it did last night i doubt it well i was on fire but um if you guys did enjoy this profile uh make sure you like and subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next one